It's a calm, quiet, and balmy summer afternoon. You're the proud owner of a new marijuana dispensary. Last year, your state passed sweeping legislation completely legalizing marijuana even for pure recreational use. Always a keen entrepreneur, you jumped into the burgeoning market and opened up your shop. Paying close attention to remain fully compliant with your state's laws, of course. And what a success it has been. Sales are through the roof. Life is good. That is, until federal agents burst through your front door, confiscate your products, arrest you, prosecute you federally, and throw you in federal prison. Stories just like this can happen and actually have happened in the real world. But how? In this five minute or less legal review, we'll talk about how marijuana is one of the most confusing and nonsensical aspects of US law. The drug is the Schrodinger's cat of the legal system. Simultaneously legal and illegal at the same time. But rather than unexplainable spooky action in the quantum universe, this duality can be explained. So let's do it. All right. The very first thing to understand is that the United States is a federalist government. Meaning there are two separate levels of legal power, the federal government and the state governments. Each state and the federal government have the power to write and enforce their own laws. Thus, as long as your butt is somewhere inside of the US, you are actually subject at all times to two different sets of laws. Our founding fathers believed that federalism was super duper important. As the theory went, giving states their own power to enforce their own laws would give citizens the power to move to states that embodied their own personal views. Citizens would also have more input and proximity to the representatives making decisions on their behalf. While at the same time, a strong federal government would ensure national security and proper regulation of things like the economy and foreign affairs. Basically, As it stands today in October of 2022, marijuana is still federally illegal. In fact, it's classified as one of the most dangerous possible drugs. Federal law classifies drugs into one of five potential schedules. Schedule one being the most dangerous and schedule five being the least. Dangerousness is determined by weighing the potential for abuse versus the medical utility. The higher a drug ranks in the schedule, the harsher the penalties for its use and the more restrictions are placed on research. Marijuana is a schedule one drug along with things like LSD, ecstasy, and heroin. But in a complete and utter contrast, 19 states have fully legalized marijuana, not just for medical purposes, but also just recreationally. Okay, but hold the fucking phone. Here, take it. Take it. Some of our very astute viewers, you brilliant bastards, might have heard of the concept of federal preemption. Which is absolutely a real thing and basically says that state law can't conflict with federal law. And if it does conflict, then federal law has to win out because it's supreme. Imagine a federal law says you must wear pink on Wednesdays. But a state law says that you have to wear red on Wednesdays. The federal law would win out. So how have states legalized marijuana if federal law says it's illegal? The answer is incredibly confusing and some legal scholars still haven't quite figured it out, but very simply, it's because of the way that federal marijuana law is written. There needs to be a positive conflict between this federal law and a state law for it to actually conflict. In much simpler terms, a state law would basically have to require that people smoke weed for it to be in conflict with a federal law saying that they can't, which obviously isn't the case. No state law is making people sell or possess marijuana. Anyway, while the scenario that we described in the intro with the totally legal dispensary being raided by federal agents, can and absolutely has happened, the reality is that it doesn't anymore. Why? Well, the feds just decided to stop caring. Remember, prosecutors always have full discretion with whether or not to charge someone with a crime. Just because a federal crime occurs right in front of their face doesn't mean that they have to do anything about it. Two famous memos written by attorney generals during the Obama administration actually told prosecutors, hey, if they're just doing small scale marijuana stuff that's legal in their state, let's just leave it alone and focus on more important stuff. Interestingly, these memos were actually rescinded by Jeff Sessions when the Trump administration took office. But today's Attorney General Merrick Garland has reiterated the stance that if it's legal at the state level, federal prosecutors just shouldn't bother. Either way, this is a good example of how changes in politics can lead to real changes in the law. And that was our five minute or less legal analysis. If you liked it, please comment, like, and subscribe. Do it. which is absolutely a real thing, and says that state law can't conflict with federal law. And if it does conflict, then federal law sorry, must- I didn't I know you were gonna do it, but I was ready. Sorry, yeah. Stay on. Okay, yeah.